so tonight I'm going to talk about the Zodiac, um, and I have a lot of uh, books and documents related to the Zodiac, and I wanted to show them to you, and through the course of the video, and as I show you these items, just kind of narrate what we're looking at, and um, sort of tell you a little bit about who the Zodiac Killer was, and why this killer was important and um, the first thing I'll show you is a wanted poster circular 9069 uh, made in October 18th 1969 and these are sketches of what the Zodiac Killer was supposed to look like and you see these pictures and if you're not familiar you're maybe wondering what the big deal was well um, this killer is wanted in connection with five official murders. And um, as you can see, suppling, supplementing our bulletin 8769 of October 13th, 1969. Additional information has developed the above amended drawing of the murder suspect known as Zodiac, a name that this uh, person gave to himself. A white male, 35 to 45 years, approximately 5 foot 8 inches, with a heavy build, short brown hair, possibly with red tint, wears glasses, armed with a 9mm automatic. And they have items available for comparison, uh, bullets, casings, uh, latent fingerprints, and handwriting. And that should clue you in that this is an uh, internal one in poster um, for the police. So a lot of you have probably seen this. And let's talk a little bit about those five murders. Um, if, you, uh, if you are familiar with the Zodiac, a lot of people know him about the Zodiac from this, uh, the movie. Um, this is the director's cut. And I, I really do think it's a creative um, package. It has one of, uh, or probably the most famous Zodiac letter is, is the, um, is the artwork for the movie. David Fincher's most thoughtful and involving film. Now, if you've just watched the movie, there's a lot of inaccuracies in it about the Zodiac that might give you the wrong impression. And I hope that some of this video might make you think a little bit more and decide to do some of your own research. You see the, the typo, the misspellings, that's typical of uh, the Zodiac Code, or the way he wrote his letters, he, he did a lot of typos. And I'm gonna refer to the Zodiac as he, because it's almost certain that the Zodiac was male. Um, that movie was based off of um, these two books by Robert Graysmith. And in the movie, Robert Graysmith was portrayed by Jake Gyllenhaal and um, Zodiac which is a straightforward um, narrative of Robert Graysmith's own personal investigation now Graysmith was a, uh, a, a cartoonist and he really became somewhat obsessed with finding the Zodiac so um I mean, he looked at a lot of clues, and this book contains a wealth of primary source or copies of primary sources of letters. There's that same one in poster we saw. Uh, this is a sketch, I believe, uh, drawn by Gray Smith based on. Uh, one of the descriptions from one of the survivors. Yeah, there were five official murders. Um, the first three attacks were targeted against couples. And the last attack was a cab driver in San Francisco. Interesting, the bookmark. Um, I actually watched the movie the, um, the night I bought this book, I was so interested in um, 
in the case that I wanted to read about it. So I started with the the Grace Smith book because you know that's what the movie told us. And this is the follow up book called Zodiac Unmasked, where Grace Smith submits to the reader his opinion that the Zodiac was this man, Arthur Lee Allen. Now, um, another picture of him. Um, Arthur Lee Allen, to my understanding, has been ruled out as the Zodiac based on DNA. Uh, the, the, you know, the real, the hard evidence has ruled him out. The only evidence linking Arthur Lee Allen is all circumstantial. And it's almost silly things. What was the expression, if you... If you give a starving man a, 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 a cracker, it'll taste like a steak. Well, if the starving man is the police, then the cracker is um, Arthur Lee Allen. I mean, and the circumstances were, you know, the kind of boots he wore, some of his weirdness. I mean, he wasn't a really great guy in real life, but um, still... Um, I think that we shouldn't settle on him. And if you watched the movie Zodiac, you might come out of that movie thinking that the case was closed and it was him. But I, I'm not a, I'm not a believer in that theory. So that's why I like to do my own research. And the good thing about Gray Smith is, you know, it's well written and it gives you a lot of the background. And it shows you lots and lots of high quality pictures of the evidence. But I'm going to show you some of the evidence in this video tonight. <laughs> the other ticket stub. Me and Mary watched the movie that night. There's that picture again. He added some background. See, I don't, I don't agree. There's a lot of theories. There, a lot of authors have thrown out theories. Another author's theory that I don't particularly agree with or, or whatsoever is um, that the Zodiac was, uh, what was it, George Hodel? Uh, the, the same guy that his son accuses of uh, killing the Black Dahlia. I don't think it was George Hodel. I got some other evidence for another video that we'll look at it another time. But um, I have this evidence bag here. I wanted to show you a few things in it. You know, the Zodiac in his uh, taunting letters to the newspapers complained that there wasn't a button, a Zodiac button, when there was all the other buttons in, in that time period between 1968 and 1974. And so here's the button. There's a lot of other cases that I'm going to talk about in other videos, but so I'm going to put some of this stuff away. For now but um, it's my handy nanny notebook this is gonna feature an upcoming video too let's move the evidence back out of the way but look at this um, this is the letter the San Francisco Chronicle got in 1969 after some murders have been committed. At this point, the Zodiac was taking credit for four shooting for the shooting of four people. The first was a couple uh, in a lover's lane, teenage couple. Both the boy and the girl were killed, shot to death. The second was by uh, a park at nighttime on 4th of July. 
And um, the first murder was uh, around Christmas of 68. And the second murder was the um, the 4th of July in 69. Hence the postmark on this, the cancellation on this letter. You can see the old Roosevelt stamps. And... Um, After that shooting, where the girl was killed and the boy was seriously injured, three uh, three letters were sent to the major newspapers in the San Francisco area, and each contained a third of a cipher. This cipher, each contained one third of it, and a letter. Which I'll read for you. Dear Editor, This is the murderer of two teenagers last Christmas at Lake Herman and the girl on the 4th of July near the golf course in Vallejo. To prove I killed them, I shall state some facts which only I plus the police know. Christmas. One, um, one the brand name of the ammo was Super X. Two, ten shots were fired. Three, the boy was on his back with his feet to the car. Four, the girl was on her right side, feet to the west. Fourth of July murder. One girl was re was wearing pattern slacks, which that actually wasn't true. She was wearing a pattern dress. Two, the boy was also shot in the knee. Three, the brand name of ammo was Western. Turn it over. Here is part of a cipher. The other two parts of the cipher are being mailed to the editors of the Vallejo Times and San Francisco Examiner. This is the Chronicle letter, as uh, you might have noted from the envelope. I want you to print this cipher on the front page of your paper. In this cipher is my identity. If you do not print this cipher, by the afternoon of Friday, the 1st of August, 1969, I will go on a kill rampage Friday night. I will cruise around all weekend killing lone people in the night, then move on to kill again until I end up with a dozen people over the weekend. And he signs it with that distinctive symbol. And here's the one third of the cipher that went to the Chronicle. It's a pretty uh, complicated cipher, but it was cracked by a husband and wife team. See? I mean, and this is not like a simple code where you can just figure out what these two are and then, and then you know, go on. Because, as you'll see when I show you the, how it was cracked, this was pretty complicated. So this is uh, one of the letters written by the Zodiac to the San Francisco Chronicle. Now let's look at evidence. And I recommend if you really are serious about researching the Zodiac to pick yourself up a copy of this book. It's called Solving the Zodiac Evidence. And the author of this book is not going to try to argue a theory or anything. And in fact, the author is just kind of disgusted with all of the commercialization of the case and just wants to offer you a chance to look at the same evidence and make your own decisions. As you can see, this book contains transcripts of reports from all investigating police departments, California Department of Justice, and the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Also included are crime scene photographs, which are somewhere too graphic to show in this video, newspaper accounts of events, timeline of Zodiac murder spree, 
and witness accounts of the events. And I'm not going to show you some of these pictures. If you have looked casually at the Zodiac case, you might not be aware that there are some extremely graphic pictures out there. Um, they don't usually print them. See, in this introduction, the author is, is, you know, he's not saying that the movie's bad or or the, the culture's bad or anything. What he is saying is that if you rely on that for your, your understanding of the Zodiac, you're not going to have the whole story. Arthur Lee Allen, he, he, he says that... Um, the Arthur Lee Allen was cleared, but the movie just pretty much says it's Arthur Lee Allen and calls it a day. The movie also has some completely bold-faced false scenes in it. For example, there's a scene in the movie, and once again, I'm just going to say I liked the movie, but there's a scene in the movie where Robert Downey Jr. receives um, a letter, you know, a threatening letter, and it has a swatch of... Uh, Paul Stein, the cab driver's bloody shirt in it. That didn't happen. He did get a letter, but it didn't have a swatch of bloody shirt in it. So we don't really know if the letter to Paul Avery, to, you know, Robert Downey Jr.'s character, was really from the Zodiac. Um, there's also the, the, the one scene that's very misleading is, and the movie tried to sort of maneuver around it, but they really, the scene with Ioni Sky playing the female driver with her baby who was possibly abducted by the Zodiac Killer, her police report was very contradictory. So, and it, in real life, there was, there was a good chance that there were no threats made to her and that wasn't the Zodiac. So, I mean, the Zodiac claimed to have killed 37 people by 1974. But, um, see, the thing is, is, um, like Billy the Kid claimed to have killed 21 men, one for every year of his life, but we only know that, there, we only know five people Billy the Kid killed for sure. And we only know five people the Zodiac killed for sure. But there is one case that intrigues me that I'm going to go into if you hang around. And I might even tell you who I think the Zodiac killer was if you stay around. Or I might not, but we'll find out. Um, I might hint. We'll say that. But um, the Lake Herman murders. Betty Lou Jensen and uh, David Faraday, they were both killed. 1968, Christmas time. Um, and uh, that was the first. This, uh, uh, this was in Benicia. Uh, north of San Pablo Bay. Uh, I'm, you know, I haven't been to California since I was three, so forgive me. If, I know that they, my parents are from, they, I mean, they met in California. I know that Vallejo, you pronounce it Vallejo, that's about all I know. Um, the Blue Rock Springs Park, that's the, if you watch the movie Zodiac, this is the first murder they show. It was the murder of, uh, Darlene Farron. And uh, the gentleman she was with survived the attack, but he was severely wounded. The Lake Berryessa murder, Cecilia Shepard, but uh, her boyfriend survived. It was a knife attack, and that was also the murder where the Zodiac wore his costume. His hood with the clip-on shades with the Zodiac symbol on the costume. And he rode on their door of their car, Vallejo. 12 20 68, which would be the first murder of uh, the Lake Herman murders, Betty Lou Jensen and Faraday. Then 7 4 69, July 4th, Darlene Farron. Then uh, today, you know, September 27th, 69 at 6 30 by a knife, and he's referring to Cecilia. That's her boyfriend who survived, and he gave a description of that was the picture. That um, the description provided by him was the basis of this drawing. That's what he looked like. Lake Berryessa. The final murder 
was Paul Stein, the cab driver. And uh, this is, uh, he, he took a ride from Paul Stein, had him drop him off. Uh, he picked him up in front of St. Francis Hotel on Powell Street in downtown San Francisco. Had him dropped off uh, in Washington Street in Maple. But, uh, but that was the address that was loved, but he actually dropped him off in Washington and Cherry for unknown reasons. Then he shot him in the head tore a piece of his shirt off which uh, the manner in which he tore the shirt off was a manner the army medics uh, tore shirts which would lead to you know accusations against army medics uh, three young witnesses described um, who they saw and that's the poster that I showed you at the beginning of the video that's the description so, then this is a this is a timeline, just a down and dirty timeline of all of the communications with the Zodiac, uh, the letters, uh, up ultimately claiming to have committed thirty seven murders, which I had doubt. But some of them are intriguing. There was one in, um, oh, well he 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 attached clues in his letters. But this is the one, this is the one that um, really I'm intrigued by. This was the murder of Sherry Joe Bates in 1966, a Riverside Community College student. And um, Sherry Joe Bates was horribly stabbed. And um, then there was a confession sent. And this might make you think a little bit. This was, uh, I believe, three copies were sent of this confession. And 1966, and it says, The Confession. She was young and beautiful, but now she is battered and dead. She is not the first, and she will not be the last. I lay awake at nights thinking about my next victim. Maybe she will be the beautiful blonde the baby sits near the little store and walks down the dark alley each evening about seven. Or maybe she will be the shapely blue-eyed brunette, it's misspelled brunette, that said no when I asked her for a date in high school. Maybe it will be not be either, but I shall cut off, and I'm, I'm not going to read anymore, but the thing is, the letter is awful. And um, this letter was sent... And it said Bates had to die. There will be more. In a similar writing that we saw on the letter. And then this was found on the underside of a desk in the library at the community college. The Riverside Community College. Sick of living, unwilling to die. Cut clean. If red, clean, blood spurting, dripping, spilling all over her new dress and this some for the most part you can see this is written on the wood bottom of a desk the desk was in a storm when they found it and um and it somewhat describes a murder i tend to believe that this individual was zodiac an early an early murder which is very consistent with serial killers here are all three copies of the letters sent. I showed you one of them to the newspapers. And here are the ciphers. And here is the actual uh, translation of the ciphers. I like killing people because it is so much fun. It is more fun than... It is more fun... And um, then killing a wild game, and it goes on, and it has some vulgarities that I'm not going to say in my video, but it does not reveal his identity. It talks about um, stocking slaves in paradise and so forth, and um, and there's um, it's just a. Uh, in my opinion, kind of an ego trip. But he just loved to write letters. He named himself Zodiac. 
he like he gave himself his own nickname kind of like how the btk killer named himself he loved writing like funny ironic cards sorry i haven't written but i just washed my pen some people think that that was uh a clue um as you can see now and he sent uh diagrams to what looked to be a bomb and that's going to come in in a few minutes when i talk about another book i have letter to Melvin Belli who he asked to go on a talk show sorry to hear your ass is a dragon that's the Shrek connection to Zodiac if you recall in the end of Shrek how the dragons and donkeys made babies but I don't think Shrek has anything to do send this snippet of a Phillips 66 map with this on keep that keep a pin in that because that will come in in a second and as, as, as you can see, this book is just chock full of all kinds of evidence. See? All kinds of good stuff in here. Yeah, just crime report after crime report for you to read. And make your own determination. This is what I recommend. I don't recommend buying books where they claim they know who it was. I recommend... Some of these pictures I'm simply not going to show you. I recommend looking at the evidence yourself and doing your own research like I'm doing. And I am far away from a solution. I have a few people in mind. And um, this is a, now this is an example of a desktop published book by a Zodiac uh, researcher that I find interesting. And this in individual has an in has a theory that um, if you uh, take the bomb diagram I showed you and overlay it on the Phillips 66 map, you will find that they align. And it, I don't want to spill everything. I want you to, if you're interested, I want you to buy the book. Um, R.S. Clemens is the name. I want you to read his story. And he also tells you about the struggles of being a Zodiac researcher and being believed or being taken seriously. But he has some interesting ideas, and I don't want to spoil them, but I want to say that he takes pieces of evidence the Zodiac sent, and he puts together an intriguing theory that I went, hmm, at, you know, I mean, and I think it's worth a read. Look for his book if you're interested. Look for his website. But I'm, the reason I'm showing this is this is just one of many Zodiac researchers who has interesting ideas. And, um, and speaking of that, there was another one. And I will tell you this story now. Um, so... When I was preparing for this video and doing my research at the same time, I ordered a book from an author uh, who uh, claims to have cracked the 340 cipher, which you might know was recently cracked, December of 2020. And uh, the 340 cipher was a cipher that the Zodiac sent that was never solved until just recently. Well, um, I'm not 100% confident that we have all the information that was in it. But at the end of the video, I'm going to read you. Um, I'm going to read you what they have released. And uh, but interestingly, the author refunded my money right around that time, right around December, and stopped selling the book, scrubbed it all off. And I thought that was really interesting. And I wonder if it had something to do with cracking the code, the three forty cipher. And I'm going to read it to you now. Supposedly, the three forty cipher was going to reveal the name of the Zodiac, but let's see for yourself. Here's the, the 340 cipher. I hope you're having lots of fun and trying to catch me. That wasn't me on the TV show, which brings up a point about me. I'm not afraid of the gas chamber because it will send me to paradise. All the sooner because I now have enough slaves to work for me where everyone else has nothing when they reach paradise, so they are afraid of death. I'm not afraid because I know that my new life is, is 
Life will be an easy one in paradise death. That's all it said.